Return air grill is an essential piece of equipment in HVAC. However, when you want to buy a new return air grill, you'll often find that the airflow of the grill is not specified. So, how do you know what size of return air grill you should buy? And you, welcome to Aircon Lounge. Today, I'll share with you how we size return air grill. Return air grill can be sized using the grill size formula. The formula used to size return air grill is grill area in square inches equal to the airflow in CFM divided by phase velocity in feet per minute multiplied by the free area of the grill in percentage and then multiplied by 144 to convert from square feet to square inches. Let's look at one example. Assume that we have a 1 ton HVAC system. Using the rule of thumb, 1 ton equals to 400 CFM. So, grill area equal to 400 CFM divided by a standard phase velocity of 500 feet per minute multiplied by a typical grill free area of 70% and then multiply the equation by 144. We solve the denominator first. So, the grill size is 164.57 square inches. Now, we can use any grill size that has more than 164.57 square inches. For instance, we can use a 13 inches by 13 inches grill measured on the inner side of the grill. The grill area is 169 square inches. Or, we can use a vertical shaped grill like 10 inches by 17 inches. That will be 170 square inches. We can also use a horizontal shaped grill such as 14 inches by 12 inches. The important thing is the grill area. Multiply the width and the height of the grill and make sure it is greater than the grill area calculated using the formula. This is a general method to size return air grill because most of the time you won't know the free area of the grill. For us HVAC engineer, manufacturers are required to provide us their grill specification. That means we know the free area of their grill. Usually, we select return air grill from the chart provided by the manufacturer. We don't need to calculate the grill size because the airflow capacity of each grill size is stated in the chart. Most of the time, we see grills constructed with 60 to 80% free area. The average free area is 70%. However, the free area of the grill drop exponentially for small grills. Take a look at this graph. As you can see, the smaller the grill, the lesser the free area. So, when deciding what free area to use, you must account for the grill size as well as the pattern of the grill. A typical grill may have 70% free area, but if you have a very stylish grill, the free area may drop to 50%. So, you need a bigger grill size to account for the smaller free area. The reason why we want to use a bigger grill size is because we want to control the phase velocity. Phase velocity is the velocity of the air at the face of the grill. The greater the phase velocity, the greater the noise produced as the air passes through the grill. Generally, we limit the phase velocity of a grill at around 500 feet per minute. So this is the sweet spot between grill size and the noise. When a return air grill is noisy, we often say the grill is undersized. Actually, what we really mean is the phase velocity is too high. That's why the grill is too noisy. So if you are replacing your typical uh, boring old grill into a more stylish one, usually the more stylish one, they have less free area. So you need to increase the grill size of your new grill in order to keep the noise level low. If you really have no choice, a phase velocity of 800 feet per minute may still be acceptable depending on the location of the grill. 
If you exceed that, the noise is usually too much. Sometimes the noise may not be coming from the return air grill. The noise may be coming directly from the air handler. So if you want to learn how to reduce the noise, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification. I'll be sure to share with you my method in my upcoming video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.